Hi, everyone. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the concept of unearned revenue. Let's take a look. So unearned revenue is one of a company's liabilities, typically a current liability. So just as a reminder, current liabilities are obligations a company expects to fulfill basically within a year is the general rule of thumb. So you have an obligation to somebody, you expect to fulfill that obligation, essentially pay it off within a year, that's a li that's current liability. Now, you might be familiar with, with several current liabilities, such as accounts payable, notes payable, or things like interest taxes or salaries payable. The thing about all of those liabilities is that they are typically debts of cash, right? You owe a supplier cash, you owe a lender cash, you owe your employees cash. You pay off these liabilities with cash. Unearned revenue is a little bit different because you don't pay off unearned revenue with cash. Unearned revenue actually reflects an obligation to pay off a good or service instead. So how does this happen? Well, basically, you collect cash in advance of fulfilling a sale or performing a service from a customer. So if by com comparison, we say, okay, what if you were to perform a service and get paid for that service all in, all in one sitting, right? You would debit cash for the cash that the customer gives you, and you would record service revenue because if you've already done the job, you get to recognize revenue for the job performed, right? Unearned revenue is a little bit different because in an unearned revenue situation, you are still getting paid, but you're getting paid before you've done the job, which means you're not allowed to recognize service revenue, right? You can't recognize revenue if you haven't done the job. Instead, you have to record a liability. And the name of that liability, because it is basically revenue that has not been earned yet, is called unearned revenue. And this is basically going to represent one of two journal entries that will be involved with an unearned revenue transaction. So if you notice here, I say two journal entries typically involve first, collect cash advance from a customer. There it is. You receive cash, record a liability because you still owe them a product or a service. The second journal entry is when you then fulfill the job, right? Do the service, give them the product, whatever it is. At that point, you can take the liability away because you no longer owe that service or product. And because you now have performed the job, you get to recognize your revenue, service rev. Notice in this example here that the unearned revs cancel each other out. And what you're ultimately left with is cash went up, and you recognized revenue for it. If you recall, that was the journal entry we started with. Had you done a job and collected cash all in one sitting, right? Cash up, revenue recognized. This is the same idea. We're just breaking it up where the cash comes first and the job comes later. Now, one thing I want to point out before we move to our example here is you'll often hear unearned revenue and prepaid expenses discussed together. The reason is because they're two sides of the same coin. When one party pays in advance for something from another party, that first party that paid in advance, they get to record a prepaid expense. That's an asset on their balance sheet. It's an entitlement to receive the future good or service. But as we just discussed, the other party, the one receiving the cash advance, they record an unearned revenue, a liability for the service or product that they have to deliver in the future. All right, on to our example. On June 17th, Flyer Corp receives a $900 cash advance from a customer for three consulting service sessions, each to be performed in July, August, and September. So notice, getting paid in June, not doing the job until July, August, and September. So this is a classic cash advance scenario. Flyer Corp fulfills the first consulting session on July 9th. Its books close on July 31st. Record the journal entry for the cash advance and the subsequent adjusting journal entry for completing the first consulting session. So first up, June 17th, we are receiving cash of $900. We have not done the job yet. We owe the job, so we record unearned revenue, $900. Then at July 31st, when we close our books, we're gonna go look at our adjusted, uh, sorry, we're gonna go look at our trial balance and we're gonna say, hey, does anything on the trial balance need adjusting? And what we're gonna see on that trial balance 
we just bring up a T account real quick, unearned rev, what we're going to see is unearned rev with a balance of $900 in it, saying that we owe $900 worth of services. But we're going to contact our consultants. They may be out in the field, working remotely, whatever. We're going to contact them and say, hey, have any of you done some of these jobs that we now need to adjust this unearned revenue account? And so whoever performed this service on July 9th is going to report in and say, yeah, 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 I did one of those jobs. You can go ahead and, and mark that off. At that point, we are going to reduce our liability to reflect the fact that we no longer owe $900 worth of jobs. In fact, now we only owe $600 worth of jobs. Now, the way I got that basically boils down to the fact that it was a $900 advance for three services. 900 divided by three equals 300 each. So barring any additional information, it's okay to just do an equivalent allocation like this, say they're all equally valued. So if we've done one of them, we take 300 of the liability away. We record 300 in revenue because we have performed that job. So we are allowed to recognize the revenue for that job. Notice our unearned revenue T account now gets a debit of 300 in it. Its balance gets lowered to 600. And so now this gives investors a complete picture of what went on. Cash went up $900. 300 of that is revenue that we've earned. 600 of that is revenue that we will earn once we complete those jobs in the future. Now, one last thing I want to point out here is um, sometimes I get a question that says, well, why'd you wait till July 31st to record this entry? Why didn't you just record it on July 9th when it happened? You could have. You could have recorded this entry on July 9th. But there's various things that happen in business that cause you to delay the recording of these entries. It could be that um, maybe uh, July 9th fell on a weekend and the corporate office wasn't open and so the accountants weren't there and so nobody was notified of, of, of the transaction. Uh, it could be that maybe, as I mentioned, your consultants, they're, they're out there in the field working remotely and maybe their, their guide just tells them, hey, you don't have to report every transaction. You just got to give us a, a, a rundown at the end of the month that tells us what you did, right? Whatever the reason, typically things of this nature are done during the adjusting process because when you look at your trial balance and you see that unearned revenue balance, you say, wait a minute, is that still accurate? Is that an accurate reflection of our true obligation? or have we fulfilled some of it and therefore we need to adjust it, okay? So that's it for unearned revenue. I hope you found it helpful. Thanks for watching and I hope you join me for another video.